Welcome back. Uh, this is Dr. Ajay Kumar and in this presentation, I'm going to take you through some of the concepts and issues involved in managing references. So <clears throat> what is referencing and why should we do it? Referencing or citation is a system used in your written work to indicate the source of the evidence, the ideas, the theories, facts or any other information that's not yours. It's, it's a way of giving credit where it is due. And why do, we, why do we reference? Basically to avoid plagiarism, which is, you know, presenting others' ideas as your own. Um, so here in referencing, you give credit to the original source of an idea, a piece of information or resource. That's one reason why we should reference. Uh, the second reason to reference is, is to support your own work with the authoritative work of another author and, and to demonstrate your own knowledge and familiarity uh, with a topic that you have uh, worked on, you have researched and, and also to help readers of your work to find the original source of information or ideas that you've used. These are, the, some, these are some of the reasons why we reference. And what is the text? Uh, what text needs a reference in your article? Basically, all statements or reported data which is not based on your own data needs a reference. And, and sometimes if you have used some special methods or some special programs for your research, maybe that needs another reference. Uh, anything that you think uh, you know, is, is going to be plagiarism, that, that all of that needs to be referenced. What can be referenced? Well, uh, the most common things that we find referenced in articles is other scientific articles. And uh, the other things that we can reference are books, or some of the chapters in books, or atlases, policy documents, you know, by global agencies like World Health Organization, their policies, their guidelines, reports, or sometimes official sources of statistics. There could be some national bodies and, and uh, there are some data and statistics that they put forth every year. You may want to reference that. Very rarely, some of the journals may allow, you know, personal communication from uh, credible experts to be referenced or sometimes unpublished documents like, you know, if, a, if an article is already accepted for publication and is in press, but not yet out there, maybe sometimes some journals allow uh, referencing that, or sometimes even web pages or blogs. But generally the last three, the personal communication and unpublished documents, web pages, we want to keep it to as minimum as possible. How do we choose our references, especially if you have a lot? <coughs> Uh, do you choose the latest? Maybe. Do you choose the best? Then we have to define what is the best. Uh, do you choose the most relevant? Yes. Yes, that's important. And how much? Uh, probably one of the principles is to, uh, to not oversight. Uh, limiting references to relevant ones and, and probably the recent ones should, should do. And, and cite fairly. I mean, do not cite, especially if you haven't read the full article or the full paper. And, and the other thing that we need to keep in mind is, is check the journal style of referencing. And we are going to talk a lot on this uh, a little later in the, in, in the lecture, whether you want to use a Vancouver style or a Harvard style. And, and virtually nowadays, each journal has variations of these two basic styles. And, and so you may have 5,000 different styles akin to each, um, you know, one style for each journal. And another principle in managing references is keep a copy of all references. Because sometimes when you've gone to publish something and then, you know, during the review process, people may come back and ask, you know, I'm not able to find this reference. Could you please share a copy? And then you may want to do that. And and so it's, it's a good principle to keep a copy of all the references that, that you are citing in your article. Uh, what should we avoid when choosing references? Probably articles which we haven't read in full, 
something not to cite because we don't have access to, we haven't read. It's not a good idea to just read the abstract and cite it. Abstracts are often seen to be misleading and, and may not reflect the true findings. So if you haven't read, read an article in full, probably you should, you should not cite it. Articles that are not yet published for the reasons I mentioned earlier, probably you should wait until it gets published. As I told you, some journals allow if, if an article is already accepted for publication, so it's in press, probably you can cite that. But certainly, you know, articles which are still under review should not, should not, be, should not be cited. Websites, especially if the pages are likely to change, then you should be careful in citing those websites. And it's always a good practice to uh, keep a copy of the web page that, that you had accessed when, whenever you did, because these often change and, and we are likely to be asked by reviewers and the editor uh, to present the latest URL, the link where, from where these can be accessed. So, so this, is, this is something that we need to keep in mind. Now let's talk a little bit on referencing styles. Uh, as I told you, there are some broad uh, categories. And, and for me, there are two important and broad categories. One is Vancouver, the most common citation style used in medical journals. This is the one which is also endorsed by the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors. And the other one is the Harvard style. Uh, mostly uh, more often seen in social sciences and other kinds of journals, but some medical journals also use this. These are the two broad citation styles. But as I told you, even though journals subscribe to one of these two styles, they have their own variations, very little variations of their own, you know, either in the way the author names are cited, um, in the way the number of authors have to be, uh, you know, cited, uh, is something is to be in bold or italics, in, is it, it should be abbreviated, some of the punctuations. So virtually every journal comes with its own style. So, I mean, uh, if you look at some of the softwares, they have a style for each journal and it goes more than 5,000, 6,000 style, citation styles. So this is going to be an issue and we will discuss how to deal with this kind of thing. There are two things that we have to look at whenever we are looking at a citation style. One is, how do you cite it in the text of the article? And then how you uh, uh, note the details of that article at the end in the bibliography. So these are the two things we have to take note. Now, if you look at in-text citation, depending on the journal and depending on the style that you are using, there could be different things. So for example, in the first block here, you can see that this is numbered, so it basically comes from a Vancouver style, but if you look at the number, is put in parentheses in round brackets. But if you look at the one below, it's in square brackets. And if you look at the other one, you see the number without brackets, but now the numbers are superscripted. So there are these minor variations and different combinations of these. Whereas if you look at the fourth one, this is completely deviating from the Vancouver style. It is an author style. So you, instead of putting the numbers, you are actually writing the names of the authors and the year of publication. So there are variations of these, how to cite in the text, in the article. And we have to keep this in mind. If you come to bibliography, that is when you actually list the articles at the end of your paper, then there are several, several variations. And if you look at this, you can see, you know, in the way the authors have to be uh, named, of course, all of them begin with naming the authors, but the number of authors that you have to put depends and varies from journal to journal. Some journals say, you have to mention all authors. The Vancouver style itself says, if the number of authors is more than six, then you just mention the first six and say et al. And that kind of number varies from journal to journal. Now, 
There is one journal called International Journal for Tuberculosis and Lung Disease. It says if, it, if the number of authors is more than six, just mention the first three. Some journals say just mention the first five. So all, all these variations exist. Then coming to the title, you know, some journals say you have to make the title bold. Some journals say it's normal font. If you look at the name of the journal, so you know, some people say you have to use the abbreviated forms. You know, there are standard abbreviations uh, that are given by PubMed uh, for each journal. So you have to use that standard abbreviated forms. Some journals say, no, there is no, nothing like abbreviations. You have to spell out the name of the journal in full. Same with, you know, italics or normal font, semicolons, colons, whether you have to spell out the page numbers in full or abbreviated form. There are hundreds of thousands of variations here. And, and much of our time when we are writing our article is spent on just correcting some of these things. Now, this is only for journal articles. And if you have books to be referenced, very different styles. You know, who is the editor? Who is the chapter author, whether it's third edition or fourth edition, who is the publisher, place and year of publication, all sorts of things. And if it's going to be reports, it's a different format. If it's going to be websites, it's a different format. And again, variations among journals. So it can, it can be pretty daunting at some time. And, and especially if you have done an article, you have done everything, you've sent out for review with your co-authors, and they make all sorts of changes, then you will have to redo it again. Sometimes it gets rejected by one journal and you want to go to another journal, you will have to do all over again to match the style of other journal. So it can get really, really frustrating at times. And, and sometimes, you know, we wonder, why are we doing this instead of concentrating on the science of the paper? So we wrote an opinion piece uh, as to why not standardize the whole referencing to one global style? Why should we have so many styles? And, and you know, really, if you look at it, there is, there is no rationale or there is no science here at all. If we have to standardize, why not standardize to one style everywhere? <clears throat> but anyway, that's not happening. I, I don't see anybody who has, who has read this paper and made, made any change whatsoever. So I guess it's not happening. So, I mean, how do we address this frustration? Are there any tools? Are there any softwares which can come to our rescue and help us with this? Of course, yes. So there are many, many tools. You know, we have some proprietary tools like EndNote where you have to buy the software, but I've used it and it's really good. But there are some open access softwares as well. And one of the things we are going to uh, learn um, in this course is about Mendeley. And Mendeley is, is an open source uh, software uh, and, and so it's really available free to use and distribute and teach. So we are going to learn a lot more about Mendeley. And, and I can tell you that if you can learn one of these softwares, invest your time in learning one of these softwares, it will make your life that, that much easier uh, instead of, you know, working your way through manually. Okay. And... Uh, there are many advantages of using these softwares. One, you can uh, manage your references very well, can download entire reference from the internet. When you are searching for literature in PubMed, for example, you can directly download references into your, uh, you know, into this software. It assures quality, it helps in sorting by author, date, keywords, journal, anything that you can think of, you can search it and get when you want it. You can have links to Word or PDF copies of the article. And, and you, you, you can even make your notes, your own personal notes on the article and, and, and get it when you want. And, and when you are writing an article, you can just draw these references straight from the database and cite it in your text. And it all gets automatically updated. If you want to change the format to a different journal style, it can all happen at the click of a button. So, strong suggestion, please learn one of these tools. And, you know, we are going to learn about a software. Uh, as I told you, it's called Mendeley. You can download it free from Mendeley.com. And in the, in the next uh, session, we are going to show you how to 
uh, use this. Uh, there will be a demonstration of, of this particular software. There are two or three main things that we have to learn. Uh, one is how to install it, the software itself, and then we have to learn how to install uh, MS Word plugin and a web importer. Uh, we need to learn how to create a library of our own and how do we organize it. Uh, how do you, uh, you know, extract a reference straight out of the web when you're doing a PubMed search. Let's say if it's not in PubMed but you've got a PDF article, uh, then how do you extract the details of the PDF? And, and how do you sync with an online account that you create when you install Mendeley. So these are some of the skills that you have to learn. And once you have created your own library, how do you extract uh, the, the references in your database and cite it when you are writing an article in a Word document. So that is something that you have to learn. How do you cite it? How do you create a bibliography at the end of your article? How do you change citation styles? How do you get new styles if there is not there, uh, you know, in, in your database? So some of these skills you have to learn and that will be the topic of the next session. So here are some resources where you can learn more about uh, references and managing references and, and, how to, uh, and how to learn more about these styles. Thank you very much. Thank you.